Alright, this is John Colo with DiscountJuicers.com today for another exciting episode for you. And where I'm coming at you today is the 2014 Woodstock Fruit Festival uh, here in upstate New York. The Woodstock Fruit Festival is a this week this year, two-week event. Next year it's gonna be a one-week event celebrating, you know, eating fruits and vegetables. So it's all about fruits and vegetables. You're living on a primarily fruit and vegetable-based diet for the whole time you're here, so this is great for detox, or great for athletic performance, or great to just build your health, you want to be sure to check them out at the WoodstockFruitFestival.com for future events. But why I'm here today is actually to share with you guys the different equipment that they actually use behind the scenes in the kitchen to make the food for the, I don't know, nearly 500 people that are in attendance this week. And so the machines we got very quickly are the uh, Vitamix uh, blender, the Omega BMJ 330 juicer, the Omega VRT 350 juicer, the Omega 8006 nutrition center, and finally the Green Star Elite. So the chef in the back of the house uses these very appliances to make some of the different recipes and create all the delicious food she does. And she uses, you know, a particular juicer for a particular task. For example, I mean, she loves the blender. She's constantly using the blender. But, uh, you know, uh, make a juice, she might use one of these juicers and she'll pick the juicer that's going to best process the produce she's juicing at that time. So and what I'm going to do next is actually we're going to go and I'm going to give a talk here at the Woodstock Fruit Festival explaining the differences, number one, between blending and juicing and why you may never want to blend again. And you're going to see actually in the demonstration and hear from the audience that's in attendance, you know, if they like watermelon, that was better blended, juiced at a high speed, or juiced at a low speed, you know, using one of these juices over here. In addition, you'll learn about the nu nutrient degradation that can occur when using a blender and why there's one raw food educator out there saying that if you blend stuff, you lose 90% of the nutrition, right? Is this true? Not true? Another thing you guys are going to learn is actually why one of these juicers may be better or worse for you depending on what you want to juice because everybody has different needs. So I guess without further ado, let's get into the talk. All right, hello everybody. So I'll be speaking about uh, juicers and blenders and their relationship in a raw food diet or just in a healthy diet in general. Um, I'm going to explain like first like the differences between the blenders and the juicers and why they're different, why you may want to use one instead of the others, as well as, as I'm going to give you guys a demonstration of you know why you might want to use one instead of the others. And there's definitely pros and cons to each. You know, some of the pioneers here may not even advocate juicing because it actually removes the fiber and, you know, if you're drinking juice, technically that's a processed food. And so I would ask each one of you to, you know, check in where, with where you're at and see if that's something good or not good for you. You know, in my belief, I believe juicing is an excellent way to increase your fruit and vegetable consumption. And if you don't remember anything else from this whole event, you know, it's your fruit and vegetable consumption is, you know, the most important thing. It doesn't matter if the food's raw or not, but we want to be eating a lot of fresh fruits and fresh vegetables in their whole raw state or as close to that as possible. So, you know, that's why I believe the juicers and the blenders are very beneficial, and especially for people and your friends and people that aren't even into this lifestyle, you know, this is a very easy way for them to get in more of the fruits and vegetables in their diet, you know. Primarily, I like to blend up my fruits and I like to juice my vegetables, um, but you know, sometimes I'll be juicing my fruits and also, you know, blending my vegetables. It's just, there's pros and cons to each, and I'll do them all any way I believe I can get more fruits and vegetables in me is a good way, and I'll be healthier because of it. So, um, so with that, let's go ahead. Once again, you know, I said that the, the blenders uh, keep all the fiber and the juicers remove it. So when we're talking about the blenders, once again, and the juicers, and there's pros and cons to each. You know, some people might say, yeah, the blenders are the best because they always keep the fiber, and it's totally true that we need fiber in our diets, in my opinion. You know, I eat plenty of fresh fruits in their whole um, natural state, and fresh vegetables that have plenty of fiber, so I'm getting fiber running through me, and the blender will keep all the fiber in there. But, you know, what's often not talked about is what the blender does do to the food that you're putting in there. I mean, this is a Vitamix, it's two plus horsepower. It runs at 27,000 revolutions per minute, which is very, very fast. Some of the juicers actually run a lot slower. For example, this one, the Omega BMJ runs at about 11,000 RPMs, which is about 
half the speed, that's still quite fast. But then going over to this side, this is the Omega Vert juicer, runs at like 80 RPMs. The Omega 8006 runs at 80 RPMs. The Green Star Elite runs at about 125 RPMs. And there's juicers that run as low as 40 RPMs now. So that's like multitude slower than the Vitamix. What people don't realize when they're saying, oh yeah, blending's the best way to keep the fiber, they don't realize it's what's happening in the blender is when you blend, you basically, you vortex and the blend, the blade is spinning around very fast. It's pulling liquid down, it's creating a little vortex, right? And with that vortex, it's pulling down air. And when it pulls down the air, that, that air is oxidizing the food at a very high and rapid rate. So much so that there's some people in the raw food movement, one of the guys, Dr. Brian Clement, he claimed that up to 90% of nutrition is lost if you blend things. So he just flat out doesn't recommend blending. Now does this mean you should never blend anything because according to Dr. Brian Clement it loses 90% of everything in there? I don't know that I would believe that it's 90% of everything in, in whatever you're blending is lost. I mean yes, I would agree that it's definitely oxidized more than you know, the stuff in a juicer, but I wouldn't necessarily believe it's 90%, but the fact of the matter is clear, it does oxidize things more. And you, we can see this, and I wanna do a demonstration really quick for you guys that I've never done before. We're gonna take one of the watermelons here, and you know, while I don't necessarily recommend juicing your fruits, oftentimes I have so many fresh fruits available to me, and they start going bad, and I'd rather get their nutrition out of them and into me instead of my compost pile. So to eat more than just one cantaloupe or two cantaloupes for breakfast, like you're piling like maybe two or three cantaloupes by simply juicing and removing all the fiber, removing the bulk, and keeping the liquid, you know, and all the nutrition, the phytochemical and finding nutrients in there. So that's when I juice my fruits, when I have a mass abundance of fruit that I just can't eat. So we're just gonna go ahead and take this uh, watermelon, try to cut it in half, and then I'm gonna cut it in, uh, Oh, that's probably good. We're gonna go ahead and cut it in half. What we're gonna do is we're gonna go ahead and take the watermelon and we're gonna I'm gonna take off all the rind. You know, I do recommend actually you juice the rind on the watermelon. The rind is actually where all the chlorophyll is and most of the nutrition is. Uh, this happens to be not an organic watermelon today, so in that case, you know, I don't like to juice the rind, but if I grew it in my garden, I would totally juice the rind. Now the rind will also make the watermelon juice not quite as sweet, so if you're worried about like getting a sugar hit, too much sugar, the rind mellows it out. I personally like I like the sweetness of, uh, of the watermelon. So you may have seen people like make watermelon juice like this, they'll literally call it a watermelon juice by putting, you know, the watermelon chunks into the blender. Let's see if we can fit all this stuff. You got it in. <laughs> Just smush it down. Yeah. Oh, we don't need a blender. Yeah. All right. What I'm going to do is I'm going to start the blender off. Hopefully, we can get this to go down. A little bit. I need a tamper here. We're going to push it in harder. Maybe I'll cut it. Say for example, you're making like a green smoothie, you're gonna fill it up with water, greens, and bananas, or whatever else, and you're gonna start at a certain level, right? So we all know where you're starting. Now what we're gonna do is we're gonna run this blender on high to blend it up. Now where are we at now? Is it higher than when we started? Did we just create like watermelon juice out of thin air? We well, added yeah. air in. What happened? It yeah. sucked air in. Sucked air in, added the air in. So now, you know, now when you drink this, it's aerated, so it may cause extra gas, because now you're drinking extra air, you may actually get some extra burping. But also, this air also causes rapid oxidation to the watermelon in there. So this is why I don't necessarily recommend blending, you know, uh, because it does oxidate so much. Now, 
what's better, you know, drinking a Coca-Cola or oxidating your watermelon juice, right? You guys don't have to think about that, but what's better than blending? Well, it might just be good just to eat the watermelon without doing anything, because guess what? Our teeth crush things up, but it works at a very low RPM. Hopefully you're chewing all your food up to into a mush, because we have teeth. We're supposed to create, you know, mush or baby food with our teeth. That's why we get baby baked food, because they don't have teeth to do this. In some cases, you know, people might have dentures or might not have good teeth. They don't want to chew so much, so that, that's where the blender could come in. Next, I want to show you guys, you know, this berry watermelon being juiced in two different juices to show you guys the differences. So once again, I'm going to go ahead and, and cut off all the, the green skins. I did use that before. And if I can get a volunteer, you know, volunteer to uh, help me pour out some sample cups, you guys can also sample the differences between these watermelon uh, juices because you guys are going to get to sample the ones with the air, the ones without, the ones created with the different juices and how they taste just a little bit different. So here's the, uh, yeah, you can just set it up on there. So next we're going to go ahead and use the uh, Omega BFJ. This runs at like 11,000 RPM. It has a nice three inch wide beef shoot. As you can see it's like adding also a lot of air in there. It's adding a lot of foam and frog. Even kind of blowing out the juice a little bit, we uh, too much, but it's nice and fast. So this is like many of the high speed juicers that are on the market right now, whether it's the Breville or like the Jack Lane or other juicers, you know, that you'd buy at a department store. They're all these low quality, high speed juicers in my opinion. But once again, you know, you're not going to make juice because it takes 20 minutes and this thing makes, lets you make it in three and otherwise you're going to drink a coffee, tea, or coke. This is way better. And look, we're already done juicing that melon. That, that's, almost, that's almost quicker than the blender there. Alright, so then we can try this one next. And look at that. Look at the consistency of that. It's really, like, aerated. Get more oxygen. You yes, more. You get, you get, you're drinking more oxygen. That's a good thing, right? Yeah. No, Alright, right. so the next thing is we're going to go ahead and once again take another uh, quarter of this melon. We're going to juice it in the Omega Vert. Now, this is the style machine that I like the most because it, it oxidizes the least. So, you're going to get the most nutrition in the juice. Also, it's the quietest. So, some people you know, are sensitive to noise and using your Vitamix or high speed juicers. You know, every day without hearing protection may cause some hearing issues because they, they aren't actually quite loud. And I have people that are noise sensitive. It's like John, actually a lady today emailed and said, John, what's the quietest juicer? Because you've never covered that before. <laughs> so I told her it's the Omega VSJ843. It's a brand new model that runs at 40 RPMs, super quiet. And actually it's currently my favorite uh, juicer out there for juicing most things. So now we're going to go ahead and just put this guy in. This guy you could barely hear running, right? It just runs nice and easily. It just gently and, you know, quietly, literally squeezes out the juice. The pulp comes out this side, the juice runs out that side. And look at how clear that juice is. You know, it's not oxidated, not oxygenated. You're getting, you know, all the full levels of lycopene and all the vitamins, uh, you know, that's supposed to be in the juice. It's in there. And so once again, the blender, we kept the fiber. You're going to taste that as soon as it comes around. And then uh, these machines separate out the fiber. This machine is nice because you can see it coming out. And this, the fiber in here is just all in here. And it's, it's actually still quite wet and runny. Maybe if you guys save your cups and drink all that, then it'll come around and just pour this one uh, in, your, in your cup. The high speed juicer, right? So that was the Vitamix juice, you got a little bit of fiber in there, and many raw foodists have videos even on YouTube, like, oh yeah, this is how you juice the watermelon in the Vitamix. Let's go ahead and taste the, uh, the next one here. So as you guys saw, like, in this juicer, like, the, the juice was really, like, still kind of, like, pinkish, like, cloudy and oxygenated. You saw it come out, and look at it in here, I mean, this is a lot more dark, rich, red, I mean, this one is less oxygenated and has more nutrition in there. And it's a very important, you know, for people that can't juice their, uh, you know, drink their juice right after they make it. Like I always encourage people to drink the juice right after they make it for the highest nutrition. Many people can't do this because they don't work at home like I do or whatnot. They have to take their juice to work. 
So it's very important, you know, if you're taking your juice to work, to use the minimal oxidation, you know, when you extract the juice so that there's more nutrition in it, you know, later in the day. The juicers or the blender that's made, you know, at high speed, oxidated more, and then it, it just breaks down faster. Uh, with this style machine, or the slow juicers, any of the ones on this side of the table, you know, the nutrients will last longer. They have uh, studies to show this. So that just shows you the simple difference between, you know, the, the blender and the juicers, and specifically the, the high speed juicers and the low speed juicer. One of the cool tests that I'm not doing today, maybe I should do that with the last, uh, with the last uh, watermelon here. It's pretty cool. I'm gonna go ahead and once again, we'll half, we'll half this approximately. And one of the tests they use is actually to just let the juicer sit, let the juices sit out. And you can see the juice separation over time. So who liked the Vitamix one the best? Uh, Nobody. Who liked this one the best? Now did everybody get the juice out of this one yet? Wow, everybody that had the juice out of the bird liked this one the best. So I mean you just you can taste the difference. Yes. You know, we want to taste vitality, right? And so many people, oh I own a Breville juicer and that's what I juice, and then you guys might own a Breville juicer. The Breville juicer is like this juicer, right? I mean I really encourage people to get the slow juices because the nutrition's higher and the juice tastes better, there's more nutrition in it, and I'm not eating for any other reason than to get nutrition in my body. So what we're going to do is we're just going to go ahead and let these uh, sit right now. This is made with the Omega uh, Vert and this is made in the uh, BM Data High Speed. And you guys will see the difference in just a little bit, like how it's going to look. I'll go ahead and trade out this in a different container so you guys can see it. It'd be better about like a little cup. But... Yeah, so this is the close-up on the on the two different juicers. You can see, you can dramatically see the color difference. Like this is nice and dark, and this is really light. And it's quite sad that the best-selling juicers are the high-speed juicers, you know, like this one. Big difference. And you guys can taste it. Did everybody get a chance to taste the, the low-speed juice? I think we have just a little bit left. So in any case, uh, you know, that was a simple demonstration of the watermelon and, and the oxidation that occurs in the blender, so it's always best to process your food at the lowest RPM possible. You know, what I've even done, because some people like to blend up everything, you can use certain juicers as kind of like pseudo blenders to mush up everything. So this model here, the Omega 8006, actually has a little attachment right here that you can pull out. This happens to be the juicing screen that has holes in it, but they have what's called a blank plate that has just a solid plate, so whatever you put in here, it just mushes up at low RPM. Now, it's not gonna get it as smooth and as, as creamy as the, the blender would, but it's gonna mash it up fairly well. So like, I have a video uh, entitled Making a Ground Salad. It literally just grinds thing up, grinds things up in a smaller, smaller particle size, and in the process, it does release a lot of juice. You know, once again, the reason why I did this was because I was actually traveling once and I just didn't feel like eating my super large salad that night and I didn't want to have to chew as much. So by running it through the juicer at lower RPM, I've minimally damaged the, the nutrition in the food and also I've broken it down and created a different texture, which I really like playing with textures in my diet. You know, the blender makes one texture, that juicer makes one texture, the BMJ that's now gone, and then as does the vert. I mean, you can the aeration and just the smoothness and, and how it tastes. So that's why I like to use this, uh, you know, in that way in some cases, you know, just to grind up the food at low RPM if that's what you want to do. One time I even made like a salad dressing, you know, because normally I make a salad dressing like in in the blender, I might use some macadamia nuts and some orange juice, one of my favorite salad dressings, and I didn't have a blender with me for like a raw food chef competition I entered once and actually had to use the uh, juicer to put both items in and kind of like get it to mix up and crush everything down to make a dressing and it worked all right. It was a lot of work and it was a pain in the butt to clean. <laughs> and I like to always recommend people, you know, use the right tool for the right job. So that's what I want to get into next because, you know, we have, we have a whole different selection of juicers here. Each one has their specific pros and cons. You know, one of the pros about high-speed juicers that have done fast, one of the cons that you guys saw is that, you know, it oxygenates the juice more, doesn't quite taste as good. With the low-speed juicers, these are all low-speed juicers, but they each operate a little bit differently. This is called a vertical single auger machine. This is actually like last year's model, it's an older model. 
it basically has an auger inside here. You put the produce in, this little, you know, uh, edge comes around, it chunks it off, and then it compresses the space where the produce is and just crushes it smaller and smaller. As it's crushed, the, uh, the juice is squeezed out this screen and comes out this side, and the uh, pulp comes out that side. So this is called the vertical auger. In general, the vertical auger juicer is like this style, and this is the Omega Fur 350, although the Omega's latest model is the Omega VSJ843. It's much superior to this, in my opinion. Um, these are pretty much good for all-around juicers, so in, in my opinion, this would take the place of like, you know, the high-speed centrifugal ejection juicers if you're just going to get one machine. It'll juice greens, it'll juice wheatgrass, it'll juice carrots, it'll juice fruits, and it all does them fairly well. But if you like, say, John, you know, I know that juicing leafy greens are really important, and I don't usually eat enough leafy greens in my diet, and I just want to focus on leafy greens. You know, then you might not want to get this because this is a good all-around performance. You want to juice a little bit of everything and you don't know exactly what you want to juice. And that's where this next model comes in. This is the Omega um, 8006. And this is a horizontal single auger machine. So this works similar to the vertical one, but instead of the auger going up and down and taking less space on your countertop, the auger is going horizontally. And this runs once again at an 80 RPM. You put something in there, it basically chunks off a piece and then works it down the auger this direction. And as it goes down the auger, it compresses it and compresses it, squeezes the juice out, and the juice comes out the bottom, and the uh, pulp comes out the front of the machine. So this style machine, uh, tends to work really well on the leafy green vegetables. Like this one does wheatgrass far more superior than this one. It also does a much better job on like herbs. If you want to juice herbs, there's medicinal herbs people are now juicing for a lot of benefits. And uh, leafy greens, it just really gets a really high yield on this. Now this is last year's model of the uh, horizontal single order machine and since this one came out, the brand new model is the Omega NC800, and that's the one that I recommend now if you guys want it to get, uh, you know, uh, a horizontal single auger machine that has a wider feed chute. It gets 25% higher yield in my test on leafy greens than this model, which this one is still superior. Another benefit of this machine over this machine is that this machine is easier to clean. It takes me about half the time. I talk fast and I clean fast, and this one it takes me about a minute and a half to clean. This one takes me about three minutes to clean, so it might take you three minutes and six minutes or three minutes and five minutes if you're not quite as efficient and move very quickly. So, uh, and then finally we have over here, we have the Green Star Elite Juicer. Now this works a lot different. While this is still a low speed machine, this does not have a single plastic auger like these two machines. What this has inside here, it actually has uh, two gears. So this is kind of like the guys out there, like, you know, inside your transmission in a car. There's these two metal gears that you literally put the produce in, and it literally crushes and squeezes out the juice. And this is in several distinct sections. So first, they have the crushing section here with these specialized gears. Then as the pulp moves down, then they have the mixing section, which is like these kind of rounded plastic, uh, you know, gears here. And then finally, this end part where the, where the uh, plastic kind of gets more... Uh, you know, not quite as smooth. That's the squeezing section that finally squeezes out all the juice. So this is literally a three-stage juicer. This most um, resembles like the Norwalk juicer because the Norwalk, you put it through the, you put the produce through it, grind it up first. That's this section. Then you mix it in the Norwalk when it's sitting in the bag before you press it. And then this section is the pressing stage. So if you need to get the juicer with the highest quality the juice that makes the highest quality, hands down that I've seen testing on. You know, in my opinion, it's the Green Star Elite juicer. Now, this juicer, while that does sound like, oh yeah, I'm going to get the highest quality nutrition, that's a pro, but once again, every juicer has its pros and cons. You know, like if you're a lady, you probably own more than one pair of shoes, you probably have 12 pairs of shoes, or maybe 15. You know, one for running, one for the beach, one for wedding, one for flats, for jogging, and if you're a guy, like I met a guy here earlier that is into fishing, it's a sport fishing, and I'm like, how many, you know, rods and, and you know, uh, bait things or whatever you have and he just has a bunch because if he's going to go bass fishing he has to use a long one if he has to do trouts or something it's a smaller one and he always has to use a different kind of lure right and to me juicers are like that like I got multiple juicers and depending on what I'm juicing I'm going to grab the juicer off my shelf of 20 juicers <laughs> to juice you know the, the thing I'm juicing at that time like you know like if I'm using cactus root juice I would never use this one I would never use this one I would never use that one I would never use the blender I would always use this one. 
But if I'm juicing wheatgrass, like screw everything else, I'm using this one, right? And so if you're only going to buy one juicer, right, it's very important to make the proper decision and get the one that's best going to meet your needs. Like you said, John, I want to juice wheatgrass 100% of the time and virtually no fruit, then, you know, in my opinion, it'd be this. If you said, John, I want to get the juice with the highest, you know, level of nutrition in the juice that lasts the longest so I can store it for three days because I can only juice one every, once every three days because I'm in my truck driving on the road, well, then I'd say, you know, go for this one. I mean, there's so many pros and cons, and that's why I've made over 350 videos on YouTube comparing like this one to this one, this one to this one, so you guys can see the yield difference, but also learn when I talk about the difference in between them, because my job, I'm kind of like that shoe salesman when I was a kid, right? I don't think they have those anymore. When we were a kid, we'd go into a shoe store, and they'd measure your foot, the shoe guy would put on your thing, they'd press on your toe, and tell you to walk around and make sure you got fit with the right shoe, right? I'm trying to fit you guys with the right juicer so that you guys get the right juice for the first time, are happy with it, and can start using it every day to include more fresh fruits and vegetables in your life, if that's what you desire, so that you can get healthier. So the, some of the cons about the Green Star Lead is that, you know, there's a bunch of parts on here, um, you know, to clean, and it, the screen is actually, uh, the screen is the hardest part to clean on any juicer. This is how I found it in the kitchen. Um, they didn't clean it uh, thoroughly enough, and uh, so, yeah, the screen is def def definitely uh, difficult to clean. They give you a special brush to clean it out, and it takes the longest. That's why this one's the easiest to clean. It has the least amount of screen area you need to clean. This actually probably has, you know, more screen area than that, but then the Berg has the most, but I find on the Berg, it's the way the screen's designed, it's easier to clean and get the stuff out than this because this has very small holes. Also, there's a, a number of other numerous parts on here that you have to clean and take apart. In addition, on this machine, I've noticed specifically, like, when you're done juicing in this area, it all gets flooded and fronted with juice. So you have to, you know, spray it down and clean it thoroughly if you want it clean after every use. So that's one of the negatives. Also, the price is a negative. You know, I think uh, this is the most expensive machine on the table. And then followed by, I think the Vitamix is the next most expensive. Then this machine, then this machine, and then the BMJ that we had to remove, you know, um, is the least expensive on the table. And another thing I like to talk about is warranties. The warranties vary on all the different machines, and I want to encourage you guys to get a machine with a nice long warranty because a long warranty is your insurance that you're going to have a juicer, you know, for years to come. Many of the inexpensive juicers you might buy at a department store, and even some of the high, higher end juicers sold at William Sonoma have short 90 day, one year, or only two year warranties. I mean, the machines on this table are serious juicers. Like, the Omega 8006, that has a 15 year warranty. So I mean, for the next 15 years, you're guaranteed you're gonna be juicing. This guy here has a 12 year warranty, which is super long. And then the Omega Bird has a 10 year warranty. So I mean, the manufacturers, I hold them to their warranties and the brands that I choose to offer, you know, they have good warranty support. And if you purchase the juicer from me and you have problems with it, you just gotta let me know what's going on and I'll be the liaison to the manufacturer to make sure they take care of you if they're not. But all the companies that I work with, they've always taken care of my customers, otherwise I wouldn't be selling their stuff because it's very important to me that, you know, besides just be selling a juicer that you're gonna use it, you're gonna be able to use it for a long time. Because the, the way that I got into raw foods, many people don't know this, is through juicing. I saw a juice man infomercial on TV back in the 1990s when I got out of the hospital with uh, spinal meningitis and I learned how to complement immune deficiency, which is a chronically weak immune system, and I knew I needed to build my immune system some way, and I didn't have no idea how I was going to do that. But I saw an infomercial on TV, Jay Gordon's the juice man, and all I needed to hear in his infomercial was that juicing, you know, you could lose weight, have more energy, and he said, it builds your immune system. So I'm like, oh, I need to build my immune system. It's weak because I was, you know, diagnosed with this weak immune system. So I started juicing, and that was my foot in the door with raw food. And like, I know I've changed many people's lives by my juicing videos because they get excited about juicing, and then they start doing it. And once they start doing juicing, then they feel the results, and they want to go further and take the next step. Whether that means eating raw food diet, whether that means growing their own high-quality produce, you know, whatever it is. So, I'm, and then juicing is a, is a good standby. And even if you're not into raw food, like giving a juicer as a gift to people for Christmas time or something, you know, is one of the biggest gifts you could give them. 
you don't have to tell them they have to use it, but if you give it to them, they have the option of using it to get healthier. A really good gift would actually be giving them a juicer and a DVD movie entitled Fat, Sick, and Nearly Dead, which many of you guys in here may have seen because that will really get some people motivated if they're in the space where they want to change because they're not feeling good. Next thing I want to do is actually want to juice some greens because I don't think anybody here has any greens lately. And since you guys came to my talk, you guys are going to get some greens. So uh, let's see here. So what we're going to juice today is uh, we got some romaine hearts. So I really like to juice romaine hearts. They're really simple, quick, and easy to juice. Um, and this is a straight up green juice, like I'm not adding any fruit. And I would normally juice something like this, you know, uh, romaine hearts for a nice, uh, you know, leafy green, um, mild flavor. We got some cucumbers, we got some celery, and we got some collard greens here. And uh, I, I think the juices we're going to use today for doing this, if we can do it, let's see here, are these two machines. We're going to maybe pour out the uh, watermelon juices here. So the cool thing about both these machines is that they're relatively quiet, and I like that on the Omega 8006, there's literally no cutting of the produce required. So for example, if you want to make green juices, like this machine's really cool because you just put a whole piece of celery in there, and it's just going to juice right up. We've got the juice coming out the bottom and the pulp coming out the front. Now if we want to juice the same piece of celery in the Omega Vert, we, and you could put it just down in there, but then you're asking for problems because it's the way this machine works, it doesn't break up all the celery strands like this machine does. And it's these celery strands that get stuck in your teeth, you know, that'll also get stuck in this juicer port or this juicer port here as it comes out and then it'll clog it up and then it'll make this machine perform horribly to the point that you're gonna say, John, this machine sucks. It makes smoothies instead of juice. And then, you know, that's happened to me. So then I'm like, okay, well, well what's up? So what I determined is that you have to take the celery and you have to, you have to cut it into eight inch pieces. Like you literally have to dice it up into little small pieces so that it doesn't clog up. This is part of the deal with that style of juicer. Once again, every juicer has a pros and cons. If you don't want to cut your celery up into little small pieces, don't get this juicer, man. And I try to show this in my videos, you know, and let people make the choice of what they want to do. I personally don't mind cutting the celery up because you know, the other thing that you don't realize is that now that I got this cut up celery, right, all I got to do is drop it in there. Once I drop it in there, check it out, man, it's auto-feeding. It just sucks it all in there. On this one, right, if I let it sit there, it kind of auto-feeds, but it's going to sit there forever. And every piece of produce I got to juice, I got to sit there and take time and waste and push in. I'd rather cut it all up, you know, have this going. Look at this, I'm juicing in two juices at once. <laughs> you know, and I don't know, I, I just like pre-cutting the stuff and letting, me, letting the juicer deal with it. Once again, on the celery, you know, the celery, I mean, the uh, the cucumber, you can't put that in there, but on this one, check it out. Just drop it in there, you can see it gets sucked in. On this one next door, we're gonna have to cut it in half, and then we can put it in there. It kind of sucks in, but it doesn't. You gotta sit there once again and push, right? I'm not into pushing stuff into juicers. <laughs> Next thing we'll juice, we'll go ahead and juice this romaine here, just like to cut off the bottom. We're gonna go ahead and chop this in half. I always like how that looks, you know, after you cut it up. And let's see, we could put this in whole. This does have some fiber, so optimally we probably should chop it up for best results. But in this one, we can easily put it in whole as long as it fits in, which it looks like it will. <laughs> Chopping stuff up doesn't take a lot of time, and just make sure not to cut your fingers off. So I mean, I like how I can just drop that stuff in there, just sucks it in, and juices it on up. The other thing I want to talk about is it's important when feeding the juicers to not feed things in and push things in too quickly, because that'll that'll mess it up. I mean, one of the things I'm not doing with the Omega Bird is using the pusher, because if I'm using the pusher. I'm pushing things in extra into the juicer when it may not be ready for it. It's like if you're chewing your food up, you know, and you have a big bite of salad in there, you're not done chewing and swallowing, then you try to just shove another, you know, mouthful in there, it's not going to fit, it's going to mess you up. And that, it does the same to the juicers, like if you over and feed the juicers too quickly, it may cause, you know, extra foam, extra frothing, and extra clogging. Alright, so let's see what happened when we juice it. We haven't juiced the collard leaves. 
So the collard leaves in the Omega 8006 are wonderful because we're just going to take like, I don't know, two collard leaves and we're just going to roll them up like a big cigar for those of you guys that went to high school once, maybe like a big duty. Um, <laughs> we're going to go ahead and put that in there. And I mean, it just goes in really easily, juices right up. I mean, if you look at this pulp, I mean, this pulp on the green, it's, it's like super dry. Once again, though, on the Omega Verts, it's, we, we could put it in there, but once again, this has nice fibrous long strings right here that'll get stuck in the juicer. So once again, just we're gonna go ahead and take it, and we're just gonna cut it into eight inch pieces just very quickly and easily. And now we're just gonna go ahead and dump some in. And once again, this is fairly auto-feeding as well, so I, I like that a lot. Now, another thing that I haven't mentioned, it's very important when using your juicer is to not just put in things haphazardly, which I have been doing today because I'm doing a demo, but normally what I would want to do is I'd want to basically take all the produce and pre-cut it. So if I'm using the bird, I would take the collard leaves, the uh, celery, and the romaine, and basically cut it up and have little piles on my cutting board. A pile of romaine, a pile of celery, and a pile of the uh, collard leaves, and then the uh, cucumbers I'd probably just cut in half, and then I'd take a handful of each of the leafy greens, the romaine and the collard greens, put that through the machine, I'd follow that with some cucumber, which are the softest items, and then I'd follow that with some celery. The, these machines, all the different slow juicers, they always require hard fibrous material to push the, uh, the pulp out. If you're giving it something like soft, mushy apples, none of the slow juicers you know, in general, work very well. They really need some hard fibrous material. Carrots are one of the most excellent things to, to have this pulp to help push through the fiber. Celery is fairly good if you, once again, if you just chop it up properly. Let's go ahead and uh, put some more celery in here. So does anybody have any questions regarding the different juicers while I finish making these uh, green juices for you guys? Do I recommend the new version of this one? Is the question? Yes. Yeah, so the new version of the Omega 8006 is the Omega NC800 in the USA. If you happen to live in Europe, it would be the Omega Santa juicer. And I do recommend that one if you want to juice like mostly leafy greens. Uh, that's the best juice for leafy greens and wheatgrass that I've tested. You know, if you want to juice like a lot of fruit, then I would definitely not recommend this. You know, and once again, every machine has its pros and cons. I like different juicers for different reasons. What's the main, what's the main difference this and that would be? The main difference between these two? Yeah, like, uh, like this one is for leaves, but in general. So I mean the main difference between these two machines here is one horizontal is one vertical. One takes less counter space, one takes more counter space. One, like I showed, you have to push each produce item in. This one's more auto feeding. This one you need to actually pre-cut the produce before you put it in so it just kind of gets sucked in on its own. Whereas this one, it's gonna take a little bit of time. Um, this one actually is easier to clean. This one's a little more difficult to clean. This one, if you want to make more volume of juice, like you're going to be done quicker in general than this one, you know, overall, because it just works a little bit quicker. Uh, let's see here. The price, in general, the vertical juicers cost more than, than the auger juicers. This one handles fruits better, like if you want to juice more fruits, you want to juice fruits by themselves. Like, this one makes an amazing cactus fruit juice. I think everybody should be juicing cactus fruit juice. How many people in here have juiced cactus fruit juice before? <laughs> a handful of people, you guys must already be watching my videos. <laughs> but cactus fruit juice is amazing. If you've drank it, you know how good it is. And like there's so many, you know, the one nutrient that you need the most is the nutrient you're not getting. And that's why I like to eat a diversity of foods in my diet. All different kinds of fruits and vegetables that you can eat raw. And most people haven't eaten cactus fruit. And when you eat the cactus fruit juice, it's so sweet. But the problem is like this juicer will simply not do it effectively. This juicer really does it quite well. So, I mean, it's really tough because everybody says, John, what's the best juicer to buy? And I'm like, man, I don't know, what do you want to juice? So, like, I almost got to talk to each person individually to find out what they want to juice, determine what they want to juice, and their other criteria that are important. 
Maybe they don't care if the juicer only has a one year warranty. To me, that's like super important. If your juicer breaks after a year, man, you spent $300 on a juicer, you gotta go buy another one, man. But if you have a 15 year warranty and it breaks in year 14, man, you're covered. You won't have to buy another juicer, spend another 400 bucks or whatever. And some people want a juicer that's easy to clean, some people want a juicer that's quiet, some people, you know, want to juice different foods. And it's all, it always just depends, so it's hard for me to say. I mean, I don't know. Like everybody, I don't know, I just like, I like my juicers. But in general, I will tell you, despite having 20 juicers at home in my house, I use, them, I use about three of them, or four of them the most. And the ones I use the most are I use the Omega NC800, which is the new version of this. I use the Omega BSJ843, which is the new version of this one. I also use the Slow Star Juicer, which is a different brand of this machine that actually has a homogenizing or blank plate, which actually we did not talk about too much. And I also use the Kuvings Whole Slow Juicer, as well as <laughs> as well as my Orange X juicer. Yeah, everybody will have their own favorite personal juicers. I have my favorite is based on what I'm juicing at that time. What was the last one you mentioned, Orange X? The Orange X, or as actually it's called the um, it's called the Olympus Citrus Press. So the Olympus well, Citrus Press. Yeah, the Olympus, Olympus Citrus Press is just for doing citrus, and that sits on my counter because I oftentimes, you know, like you guys have had unlimited orange juice here. I just I'll always usually have oranges or something and I'll always be able to just juice that like if I'm super late and running out the door and I want something to eat and I can't get out one of these. I mean I could make I can make a juice in this machine. I made 32 ounces of juice before a flight I had last week in like 10 minutes and would be able to be out the door and I didn't clean up because my roommate did, but I, I had to peel my cactus fruit juice in and I was out 32, 32 ounces of juice in the juicer. All cactus fruit? All cactus fruit, yeah. So I mean, it, and I have a video where I, I, from start to finish with this machine, I made a pitcher of juice this big in under 15 minutes, including the cleanup. So I mean, it, like people make excuses like, oh, I don't have enough time to juice. I mean, if you want to do something bad enough, you will make the time. You know, if your husband or wife is important to you, you will make the time to spend with them. And unlike you, you get you get faster. And you get faster. I mean, as you guys see, I'm talking and ch chopping and juicing and yeah I mean this is what I do because I juice every day I mean this is not a joke I mean I think it's sad that many companies online may just sell juicers and they don't know a lot about them and they may not even use them because they can be selling widgets for all they care I'm selling juicers because I want to you know empower people to create change in their lives and positive change in their life and get healthier because I'm simply glad to be alive today because I was given a second chance in you're life. doing it you're doing it Thank you. All right, so are there any other questions for me here while I finish up making these uh, green juices? Yes? Um, in the Omega, there's like that plastic plug inside. You know what I'm talking about? Right, like, in the bottom. Do you find that sometimes it closes if you're juicing or, I mean, what's kind of the focus of it? So the plastic plug on the bottom that's yellow, a little flap? Yeah, and you can like push it in. Right. Sure. So she's talking about in this machine, let me go ahead and turn this off really quick. Sorry. No problem. <laughs> in this machine here, there's this little plastic plug right here. And this little plastic plug, the job of this little plug is to actually keep the produce in the machine, you know, after it breaks down and to extract the most juice. Because if we left this plug out, it would send out more pulp that was more wet. And you'd be sacrificing some of the some of the juice actually. So always when using the machine, you want to put this plug in to put back pressure on the pulp. Uh, the only time you're gonna remove it is actually for cleaning. So yeah, you're gonna to want to keep this in all the time, and uh, yeah, just remove it for cleaning. Does that act as the same as the thing on the end of the Exa green straw? Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. Smart. So on this machine, you know, there's uh, basically a little spring tensioner that basically puts pressure on the pulp that doesn't let it out until it's dry. And that one's automatic. This one is manual. So in some cases, if you're like juicing with this and you have it screwed all the way in and you start backing up and stuff starts coming up the feed chute, it's like this is not doing its job. You need to basically unscrew that to let some of the pulp come out. And then same likewise with this machine here. This machine here, basically in the in the back, in the end of the screen here, it has a little like plastic um, or silicone piece that actually keeps some back pressure in there. Now the newer model of this is actually an adjustable um, end cap, so you determine the back pressure, so that allows you to get a little bit more, you know, uh, 
more juice, higher yields from my testing. But if you don't want to deal with extra parts, because some of these extra parts that attach on here, people, it goes down people's garbage disposals and then you lose it and all this kind of stuff. This is just easy to use. Well, that's another thing about when you're selecting a juicer that, you know, it's like everybody could ride a tricycle, hopefully, right? Because it has three wheels, you get on it, you pedal it, you're not going to fall over, right? But like a bicycle, right? Bicycle, most people over here probably ride a bicycle, but you got to learn how to balance and stuff, right? And then a unicycle, that's like super difficult because you really got to balance it. Some juices are more like tricycles, like this juicer on this here, the centrifugal injection, that's like a tricycle, man. If you just put stuff in, it's gonna juice for the most part. Yeah, on leaves and stuff you put in there, it's gonna not really juice them that well. This one's barely more like a tricycle, you know, than this guy here. This guy's more like a bicycle. And this guy, a little bit more like a unicycle, because you gotta, there's a big, there's a steeper learning curve to get to know how to use it right when you get it. But once you start and use it some, and use it maybe about, about a month, you'll get the hang of it and you'll, and you'll learn it, just like your boyfriend or girlfriend, you know, or husband or wife, they have peculiarities about them that you just kind of get to know and, oh yeah, you know, whatever, Joe likes his eggs over easy, or wait, his juice with no kale. <laughs> All right. Well, why do you not like juicing? So the question is, why do not I not like juicing fruits with the horizontal juicer? So I mean, the main reason why I don't like juicing fruits with the horizontal juicer is simply because they just don't do it well. Like I'm all about efficiency whenever possible in most things in my life, and this machine is just not efficient at juicing fruits. Like I can put fruits in there, I'm putting cucumbers in there now, and it's actually doing a fairly decent job. But if you do like, I did pineapple in this thing, and I have videos showing the results. I mean. The pineapple doesn't go through, it clogs up, it backs up, it's coming up the chute, and it's just not, the pulp's not coming out, there's no adjustments, and it just doesn't work. And then I'm like, ah! And like, I went to my friend's house who has one of these, which is like one of the best juicers, but I want to juice a pineapple, and I'm putting it through there, and I'm like, this is not working. I was getting so frustrated. I had a coconut, you know, with the old coconut meat, so then I put the pineapple through and use the coconut meat out of the pineapple because the coconut meat provided fiber to push all that hot, soft pineapple through. Just didn't work. Like, if I'm using pineapple, man, I'm using this one. And that's why I don't like, you know, using this one for fruits because it's just not effective. And it takes me longer. Like, I would much rather take cactus fruits, chop them in half, drop it in, it auto feeds, auto juices, my juice comes out. All I gotta worry about now is peeling the cactus fruit, cut it in half, drop it in there, and it's done, whereas this one I'd have to cut into quarters, put it in, I'd have to sit there and push it in. It would actually, this is so efficient, it would actually grind up the cactus fruit seeds. It makes like seeds in the juice, like texture. It actually make the juice not quite as sweet because of the, because it's juicing the seeds, which probably is a good thing because it probably antioxidants in the seeds. I don't know, it just takes longer. So that, that'd be the answer to that one. The vertical juicer, is it, uh it's good for oranges. The vertical juicer, yes. So I have juice citrus in here. I do recommend when juicing citrus is that you take the citrus and you just peel off the orange coloring on the outside. You leave all the white pith. That's where most nutrition is, and that's where the most fiber is too. So the more pith you can get in the juicer, the better it's going to work. The less pith you put in, not as good as it's going to work. One of my favorite combos is actually pineapple and orange juice, or juicing pineapples and oranges. And there's a special technique for juicing pineapples in these style machines as well. The core has the most fiber, but it also has the most strings and it gets backed up the most. Yes? Nutritionally speaking, okay, the omega vert, can I feel good about that forever, like as compared to say the one that Gerson recommends? So the question is, on the Omega Vert, can I feel as good about that, the nutrition that's coming out of it forever, you know, compared to the, the juicer Gerson recommends? So for those of you that don't know, Gerson therapy is a therapy that they use for cancer patients and people that, you know, basically the doctors send home to lose their life and there's no cure for them. And he recommends the Norwalk juicer. They actually have two in the kitchen uh, today that they've been using to make their banana ice cream, that nice fluffy banana ice cream. Now when, when, uh, when the Gerson was alive, that's all they had. They didn't have Burks, and I'm, I'm confident that if they had, you know, the Green Star, the Burt, he may have used that, but all they had at that time was the centrifugal juicers, the high-speed ones, or the Norwalk, which is a much more lower speed and damages the nutrients much less. I've seen testing that shows, like, the Green Star will basically produce a higher quality juice than the Norwalk would. And so, 
the companies that have the vertical juicers haven't done exactly the same testing, but I'm just surmising from my opinion, from the taste, and from using them, because they're also at a low RPM, they're also making a high quality juice. So, you know, I use the slow RPMs in my my house. I could, I have a Norwalk, I have that, but I don't still use them because they're a pain in the butt. Not time efficient. And so, I'm happy with these for a generally healthy person. Now, if I had some major disease, I might just like, I'm just gonna use that because I wanna give myself every possible advantage. All right, so, oh, who wants more watermelon juice? <laughs> All right, so we'll bring that back to you guys, and then okay, then uh, can somebody go around and uh, share the green juice? Uh, what's the difference between uh, a mega juicer and a horrible thing? Same type of juicer. So the next question is, what's the difference between the Omega juicer and the Herb juicer? And basically, the Omega, uh, this Omega and the Herb are made in the same exact batch. It's only the name that goes on it uh, in the USA. So it's the same. The same thing. There's minor differences. Any other questions? John, yes. what did you find? Okay, so this is my plug problem. The first thing that you answered. But sometimes I find if I'm cleaning the Omega, underneath there's like liquid. Right, so if you move the plug out, there will definitely be liquid. Okay, so that's what it is. That's one, and the other thing too is if you, on the, on, on the vert, oftentimes there, will, there may be liquid on all vertical juicers just because that's part of the design. The seals tend to go bad. So it leaks juice, but the other problem is if you're not using it properly and it's backing up inside there, the juice goes to the least pass of resistance, which is down a little center tube thing there. So it's very important to use it properly. If you do have an Omega Vert, I would recommend you watch a video online entitled Best Practices Omega Vert, where I share my tips. I also have how to make a green juice in the Omega Vert, which I share even more tips. And after watching some of those, maybe a few times you might get the <laughs> technique down and then you'll minimize your leakage. Mine is all the like the problem areas. Thank you. Yes. Or, yes, yes, yes. Alright, I'll have to hang out here for a little while more. If you have any other questions, you want to come up and talk to me. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So I hope you guys enjoyed that episode filmed here at the 2014 Woodstock Fruit Festival. If you like eating fresh fruits and fresh vegetables, you're going to come and want to come out to the 2015 Woodstock Fruit Festival. They're actually doing them twice. They're doing one in Hawaii in April, which is more going to be party slash vacation slash tour of Hawaii with unlimited fruits and vegetables to eat. And then they're going to be doing again in August 2015 here in upstate New York once again. And man, it's just a party. Um, I love it so much. And once again, these are the very equipment and juicers and blenders they use behind the scenes in the kitchen and you could also use in your home. Uh, hopefully after watching this video, you've learned some of the pros and cons of using the blender or the juicers and also the juicer that may be best for you. Now uh, be aware that the juicers that I showed in this video, you know, some of them are older models. So nowadays Omega instead of the Vert 350 they have the all new Omega VSJ843 which is actually my new favorite vertical single auger juicer and Omega also has the Omega NC800 which is the upgraded model of this 8006 you know that I showed and the, the Vitamix is the good old Vitamix uh, the model I recommend is the Vitamix Turbo Blend VS that's the model you want if you're into eating a healthy plant-based fruit and vegetable diet it comes with a nut milk bag a really cool raw foods DVD as well as a recipe book that does not come with any other Vitamix that will encourage you to eat more plant based healthy foods instead of the other processed and junk foods that may be contained in the other you know Vitamix recipe books that come with the Vitamix. So I hope you guys enjoyed this episode. If you want to learn more about the juicers and see specific juicer comparison tests be sure to check my YouTube channel. I have over 350 videos at this point demonstrating different juicers describing them and comparing them side by side so that you guys could learn which juicer may be the best for you because the best juicer for me may not be the best one for you but it depends all what you want to juice. So to purchase any of the juicers you guys saw today be sure to visit the website discountjuicers.com once again my name is John Kohler with discountjuicers.com and be sure to visit discountjuicers.com slash YouTube for special promotional offers for YouTube visitors. 
Alright, this is John Colo at DiscountJuicers.com to do another exciting episode for you. And in this episode, we're actually not going to be juicing. We're actually going to be using one of the juicers, the Omega NC800, which is identical to the NC900, only the color is different. 